now we have China disrupting the paradigm. So the problem is, in the 60s, the challenge was to increase performance. I mean, kinematic performance. Aircraft became faster, more maneuverable, with longer ranges and so on. Weapons and sensors were devolving and quite quickly, but the base idea at the foundation of the race was the same as at the beginning of military aviation. Increase performance. But in the 70s, the performance reached a plateau. For example, going operatively faster than Mach 2 required totally different technologies. Aircraft maneuverability hit the limit of the human body around 9 Gs. And since then, engines have become much more efficient, but also the requirement has increased, so the practical aircraft ranges have increased somewhat, but nothing massive. From the 80s onwards, the competition progressively moved towards sensors and weapons. Guided missiles, better radars, better sensors, better electronic intelligence and electronic warfare. Furthermore, a lot of the aircraft combat capability today is outside of the aircraft itself. Tankers, AWACS, electronic warfare, communication nodes, the so-called force multipliers now have a key role in the deployment of air power. And here enters China. China was in a very backward position, but when the opening up started in the late 70s, they demonstrated a remarkable capability of progressive their expertise. They started copying Soviet or Western designs, but that is history. And China's strong point is exactly in all those technologies where the competition is. Electronics, sensors, guidance, automation, and so on. Today it seems that they keep accelerating the pace of development. Just consider the flurry of news we had between November and January. And this doesn't apply only to combat aircraft, but to basically everything. This is one of the reasons of the current attrition between China and the US. Take for example the Trump administration's stance about the Panama Canal, where the Chinese ownership seems to be the issue.